So hello. So you know my name is Andy. Uh, I'm the delivery director of Reckless. Um, just to set a bit of context, uh, Reckless is a uh, digital agency. It's about 35 people there. Um, and we do everything that digital entails these days. Um, I also need to point out that my talk today is a team effort. Two of my colleagues are here who helped put all this quality work together. Um, I was volunteered to do this, so I've had to deal with the impos imposter syndrome, sleepless nights, the terror, endless terror. Um, but I'm doing it because it needs to be heard. Right, before I start, I've created my own low-fi quality checklist to make sure I do a good presentation. This has been put together with the help of my colleagues <coughs> and my wife. First, don't drink too much coffee. Uh, how much is too much coffee? Eat. I forgot. I'm really sorry. I get hangry, but I'm actually all right. Don't be a scruff bag. I had a haircut last week, so I think I look pretty good. Um, don't be mad. I had a text from my colleague saying, please don't talk about pigeons. I won't, but they are a quality bird and a great vehicle for talking about quality. <laughs> Turn your phone off. I did that, but then the alarm on my phone went off, so I've now turned that off. Put your Twitter handle on. I never remember, so I've done it. And that's it. So I think I've got most of those. So there's a good example of uh, how to prevent yourself from making mistakes. And we'll come, go on to that in some more detail. <clears throat> right. I've covered a bit about the agency. I just want to say I'm not an expert. So I will signpost you to experts, those people who inspired and influenced our work. But I'm not an expert. We're just starting a quality journey. Uh, I've said a bit about, just to reiterate, we're an agency. We're not a software development house. <clears throat> we're not set up around product managers. Scrum and all that kind of stuff. Um, this all came about because we were trying to address what we call the inequality of quality. So we had quality in pockets across our organization, but we needed to make sure that we could spread that across everywhere. Um, and this all came about, this experiment I'm going to talk to you about, was we had tried lots of different things, but they just weren't working. Uh, and we had an epiphany, and that was based on uh, a man called David Langford. He did a lecture for the Deming Institute, uh, and he talked about attributing fault to the person without considering the system. And he gave a really simple example of his kids not tied in their room, and the fact they didn't know how to tidy their room because they'd never been shown. And that just sort of lit a fire under our organization, made us think we'd been approaching things from the wrong angle. Not individual and individual performance, but thinking about the system as a whole, and whether it's set up to help people achieve. Right, so what do we talk about when we talk about quality? No, I'm only joking, we don't. <laughs> Failure. Well, that's Brexit done. Um, <laughs> where we went wrong, we were planning for people. So the answer to that question, yes, we were planning for people. We were coming up with great ideas, but we were just giving them to people to do them. Checklists, processes, roles and responsibilities. But we were giving it rather than involving people in the solution. Intervention, you can see we had a slack free zone. Our way of getting people to talk more because we knew it was important to delivering quality products and services was to ban slack for a week. It worked for a week. We put slack back in, everyone went back to what they were doing before. Uh, fundamental attribution error, that's the thing I just mentioned about before, the Deming lecture. We were looking at individuals and individual performance and not thinking, well, does the system actually stop people from doing a good job? And that led to the question, do we have the right system? To which the answer was, no. Right, so what do we talk about when we talk about quality? We talk about therapy. We had to go into therapy because we needed to talk more about quality in an open way and start thinking about setting goals together around quality that would help us do wonderful things. So therapy was workshops. Um, we came to those as equal partners. That was super important to get that across. We defined quality together. Everyone had a voice. Everyone had a chance to feedback, so when someone had spoken, you could feedback on what they said. We supported each other. It was a safe environment, so you could say what you wanted to say. And we did something about, uh, I don't know if you know about the concept of cooperative conflict, which is when you invite people to disagree. But you do it in a kind and caring way, and you do it around a framework of goals, which brings me on to goals, which is what we also talk about when we talk about quality. So what did we do? Oh, we did an awful lot here. We, Started by surveying everyone in our company, what do you think quality looks like? What do you give some examples of quality? We then went into uh, interviews with people to ask them uh, in more detail about what is quality, what are the obstacles to quality. 
We then took all of that information and deli the delivery team, which my two colleagues are here, um, we created three goals for our company, which were cross-company uh, cross goals around products and services, uh, customer and clients, and then people and relationships of our actual workplace. What we then did is we had um, workshops where we took those definitions of goals, we took them to the workshops, um, and we asked the people in those workshops to help us to evolve those goals. They were the default, the starting point. Um, we spent a lot of time trying to get shared belief. And the way that we did that is through looking at key words in those goals, highlighting what they were, and then defining those key words. And that was really important because we came across some really unusual situations where it's called, I like to call it the curse of the superlative. So when we talked about the word good, what does good mean? Well, I think it means you know, something of quality. But for a lot of people now, it means mediocre, which you can imagine the confusion there. If one group of people go off thinking good means good and another group go off thinking it means mediocre. So we invited disagreement in a kind and caring way against our goals, and then we came away with a definition together that we all believed in. We did that with every key word. Um, what we also embedded in what I've just described there is something you can see on the right-hand side. It's called the ladder of belief. And this is something that I learned about on a strategy course at Cranfield Business School about 10 years ago, a company called Cognosis. Um, if, you, if a goal is clear, I understand it. If, a goal, if you let me shape that goal, I care about it. If I can make sense of that goal, I can see it's going to happen, and it's relevant to me and my job, I believe in it. And if people believe in goals, then they're more likely to happen. We then talk about action, and what we mean by action. So we then took our goals, our definitions, and then we started to think about, well, what, what do we need to see? So we asked everyone again, survey, what do we need to see happening in our organization to know that we're achieving our goals? So things we should see every day. Um, we took all of those suggestions from the survey, grouped them together around common themes, and got everyone back together in different groups to, to work out which were the most important, where there was commonality, where we could group things together. Um, and we did that over three workshops, and the outcome of that was, again, we had shared belief in the things that we need to see. There was so much crossover between, even though we had three separate goals, the themes emerging, there would turn out to be five in the end, and what we would need to do to address those, we kept being repeated in each workshop, which was good, because it meant we were honing in on the real problems. We then went on to the how. So we'd done the what, what is the how? How do we intend to incorporate everything that we've just discussed that we need to see into our working life? And what we did with that was, again, take those themes and the statements around what we need to see, and then we got into groups again, and within those groups, smaller groups, looking at, well, what actions do we need to see in the workplace that will mean that we are achieving our goal? So when we finished all that, we had the goals, the what we need to see, and the how we intend to make it happen in one plan. Uh, it's a massive plan, it's about 13 pages. But we could then break that down into monthly action plans around core themes. We also talk about retrospection. Um, every single thing we did had an outcome. We went over everything, and to the point where it was driving me mad, but if we had a, meet, if we had a workshop, if we sent an email, if we sent a survey, we went back and checked it was the right. Did we do it right? Did it meet our outcomes? Could we do it better? We changed the format, the layout. We changed the timings. We changed the pairings. We changed everything, pretty much after every workshop, everything we did to make sure we get the best out of it. We incorporated what we learned straight away. We shared every single thing that we did. So all the surveys, everything, all the notes, everything. So there was complete transparency. And finally, we took the goals and the keywords and we've created those into a, uh, they're in a Google Doc that anyone can edit and go and look at any time to help us evolve them over time. And we look at them every three months to make sure whether they're still relevant. We talk about measurement. So we went for something really simple. So we have our five cool themes down the side here. And then we have it split into four weeks and we ask people to vote. So this is on our progress, where we are now and where we're heading towards our goals. How, how closely are we aligning with them? Each week, red, amber, green, whether we're on track or off track, 
And then when we count up those votes each week, we put a smiley face, neutral face, or unhappy face. So you can see the general theme of where we were progressing and where we probably might need to do some more work around getting things done. Oh, what we learned, there was about two million lessons, but I'm gonna focus on just a few. Belief is more important than understanding. If you believe in something, it's more likely to happen. The power of we and relationships. So we, us together, particip participative workforce, involving everyone. Everyone from the receptionist to the MD was involved in this because quality goes across everything you do. How you greet someone when they come into your office as a client could determine how well your project's gonna go. So you have to make sure that you do everything the right way. Interve prevention over intervention. I give you my checklist rather than someone giving it to me halfway through my talk, which would have been a bit bad. So always focus on preventing. It costs more at the start, but it will save you money in the future. Talk about goals every day. They're in our office on a board. We talk about them as often as we can and reference them. We have quality moments, which are small, small moments where we can coach people, where if we see something wrong. So if you've defined what quality looks like and the steps to achieving quality, when someone doesn't do it, you can then ask why. There and then. Why did you do it that way? What's an alternative way of doing it? A way of reinforcing quality all the time. Um, have fun and play. Um, as I mentioned, pigeons before, um, we, we talked about birds a lot. We talked about quality SAS, which is a separate talk. Maybe I should combine the two. Pigeons and SAS, a perfect quality match made in heaven. But I don't think the world's ready for that. But maybe it gives you an idea of the type of thing that we did. We always made it playful. And we always tried to make it enjoyable so that people didn't feel like it was work. Champions will emerge. People will want to do this. People will want to help. And want is the key word. When they want to do it, they're going to do it. You can't force people to take on more than you need to when it comes to things like this. No one wants to do a bad job. And I think that, that's a bit of a revelation because you always work with people that you think, why do they do it? But when you know what quality looks like and the steps to get to it, you can then ask why. Why didn't you do it? And you can get to the underlying theme of why things are going wrong. What's stopping you from doing it? And that's when I think the real conversations start. And the last one is you can lead a horse to water. Um, there's so much of this that you know already and you'll know the things to do. But you have to go on that journey together and you have to help people learn for themselves and you have to learn together. Right, we talk about our quality friends. So these are the people, it's their original thinking that allowed us to do something original in the context of our work. I strongly rec recommend you, you read these. I'll, I'll tweet it afterwards. So much of the, what we've, we've talked about is in turn that ship around. And so much of what we've talked about is from Alfie Kong. Quality is democracy. Um, they really are superb writers and experts in the field. So, things to remember. I love birds, by the way. Um, this is a raven. Raven is a quality bird because it has a quality memory. Um, things to remember. Talk about quality together. Define quality together. Work out the steps to achieve it together. Make quality part of your work routine together. And there's a key word there, together. Do it together, because then you'll all feel part of it. It won't feel like a secret club where people are defining goals in a room that you're not in, and then coming out and give them to you and say, there you go, you go and do it. And once you've done that, that's when the real quality journey begins, because you can have proper conversations about why things are done well and why things aren't. And I'll leave you with this. Just show this to anyone that ever talks to you about quality and it's too expensive because it's more expensive if you don't do it properly. Because how many people have worked on a project where you just get it done, get it done, get it done. Get to the end and then you've got about six months of bug fixes. It never goes away. And you have clients coming back to you in two years time saying, do you remember that website you built? If you do it properly and you work on prevention, then it will save you time and money. Right, thank you very much.